All right, hey guys. Um, we just landed, did a five airplane flight. I'll put a picture here. Um, but we just did a really fun group flight over to a field that's not super far away from here, but it was fun. We had the Challenger, we had the Kit Fox, and three other airplanes, a Cub, a 170. But anyways, the point of this video, I just got done doing that video, so you'll probably see that one after this one. The point of this particular video is to talk about a couple things. Luckily, you don't have to see this ugly mug the whole time because we are gonna talk about what I use in the cockpit and then also we are gonna do a pre-flight. Um, I had somebody request that, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, hopefully this is something that, and I, just so you guys know, I am not a CFI. Let's see if I touch that. I am not a CFI. I am just somebody who loves challengers and um, who has one and is making content and seems to be the only person talking about the details of the Challenger. Um, obviously they're notorious. People buy them and uh, sell them very quickly. So let's stop that from happening. If people know more about it, feel more comfortable with it, then that won't happen so much. So anyways, I feel like my face is all red. I got summer yesterday. My eyes are all, oh, anyways, um, you won't have to look at this luckily. So uh, let's get started. Let me get in this thing. Guys, this is so crazy. This is a plane from my childhood. People who know me from Arizona will know. It's about to come right here. And this is Dom Laughlin's old 210. I have flown in this airplane before from my childhood. I have literally done so much around it. I've watched that airplane. I've flown in it to California and Northern Arizona. And here it is right here in Texas at my local airport. He sold it, but it used to say the Riverside Casino on the tail, so now it doesn't. But man, talk about giving me goosebumps. I actually got goosebumps when I saw it, so uh, pretty awesome. All right, well, I'm not going to get in because I have the um, uh, dolly on, and then if I take the dolly off, then I got to lift it back up with one hand, which I can do all that, but I'll just show you guys from here. Uh, so obviously, when you get in the Challenger, you're going to have your basic instruments. Um, if I can see, get the light up a little better. You know, you're gonna have your altimeter, your airspeed. There goes the video or the airplane from my childhood. Um, you're gonna have the uh, compass. Uh, then down here, you're gonna have voltage. And actually, all these are different. RPMs, uh, EGTs, CHT. Um, and then over here, I've got my fuel. You know, my plane, my switches are just my strobe. Golly, I wish I could see. My strobe, my fuel pump, my master switch, my uh, mags, my key, my starter. And um, up here, I have my comms, which I'm actually moving the comms. It's going to go back here above the people that are back there because when I have both plugged into here, this actually hits my head. So I actually have to put my head down and it kind of hurts my neck. It kind of sucks. So this is all going to move. You have your trim for your nose up, nose down, because obviously you have flap arounds in this airplane. Um, this works really good for trimming for flight. People say they don't use it for landing and stuff, but and takeoff, but it, it actually will help you if you are doing a short field takeoff um, or if you want to slow down a little bit when you're landing for mine. I don't know, maybe some of them are different, but mine works just fine. So I don't know, debate me, I guess. Um, my in-flight audio and this is the battery source that's coming from my 12 volt that'll go into my gopro so basically this just plugs into my gopro here and then i have my gopro where i can lean it back and forth obviously it's a little loose right now um and uh that's how i do that this is actually a, a mic switch so that i can plug it into this or a different com box and be able to use the switch on here as you guys probably noticed in my videos i actually have been using this headset where the switch is on the uh the headset it's annoying and it's probably not super quality but it's what i have to work with right now because this radio is a that brand and it does not have a mic out switch so you have to physically touch it or use the switch on the headset so i'm gonna get a new radio Let me get a new radio so I can use the switch. Um, there's actually one on both the front and the back. Uh, that's that's my radio situation. Um, I run a Stratus 3 um, for my uh, ADS-B in, and then I run the iPad. Um, 
Let's see here. So we just landed here, so it's showing me the chart. But when I'm flying, there's a King Air coming, so I might have to stop this. But when I'm flying, uh, this is what I'm using is uh, for flight. And I usually just get rid of the uh, flight plan, have full screen traffic on. Um, so then that way I can see if there's anybody around me. All right, not a King Air. It's like a Malibu, Turbo Malibu. Um, so anyways, um, this is what I use to flight, both for my flight plan, you know, where I'm going, and also for uh, traffic. Obviously, the main thing for me is traffic. Although I don't have ADS-B in this airplane, other people do, so I can see them. If I'm flying with a group of people who don't have it, then we just need to rely on radios. And I, well, you should always rely on your eyes anyways when you're flying any airplane, for the record. But uh, yeah, so this is what I use. Um, you know, I just get in the plane and I turn that on, turn that on, turn this on, set that. By the time I set that, then I'm back to this to make sure this is all going. Um, in regards to my gauges, um, obviously I set my altimeter based off the, you know, the field elevation or whatever the ATIS says. Um, my EGTs, they, one of them sits a little bit higher than the other, but they never go above like A5900. Um, one of them sometimes will touch a little bit more than that, but not by a bunch. My um, CHTs are usually 250. I think I said EG, EGT, CHT. My C, uh, CHT is usually about two to 225, 250. This last flight today, it was under 80 degrees. It was kind of cool up there and it stayed below that. So I'm always watching these when I'm flying. You know, you always want to watch these. My RPM gauge, I honestly don't think my RPM gauge is 100% accurate. So um, I normally fly at like 6,000, um, but I believe that my 6,000 is probably 50 some odd hundred RPMs. That's my personal belief. Um, I am probably gonna get a new, one thing I plan on doing with this airplane is I wanna replace this whole panel. I wanna get rid of the primer. That's my primer to start the engine. Um, somebody asked me about this the other day. I pump it until the air is out. And then once I feel resistance, I go three pumps no fuel pump and i fire it up and it always works 100 percent of the time um if it doesn't then i'm doing something wrong so uh anyways i plan on doing the um upgraded panel so i'm gonna have a digital rpms and egts and chts um this is a gps uh jason put me onto this from the cotton patch um this was like 25 bucks on amazon but literally it just plugs into my 12 volt source up here and this is a ground over the ground so when you're flying obviously you're going to want to use your airspeed you know your vne and all your your stuff here um but this will give you the over the ground so if you have a big tailwind you know like today i saw 85 to almost 90 out of it but on here you know obviously i was only doing you know 65 70. um i do have the old airspeed indicator and it shows my vne at 80 my red line um i was going to get a new one but honestly i don't care i'm not i'm not I, I don't want to fly fast. I'm not in a, I'm not racing anybody in this airplane. This airplane is for putting around. Um, matter of fact, that being said, I don't plan on doing anything anymore. I had all these plans when I bought this plane. I said, you know what? I'm going to put the fairings on here and the little dooflotchums, you know, the fairing covers, the gear, have it gone over, you know, put the nose cone on it, put a bigger, well, actually I am doing that. So I'll hold that off. Um, you know, I was going to do everything, the bigger tank, the bigger this, the bigger that. And I have decided to keep it simple, stupid. I am, I, I like the way it flies. I don't need to go any faster. I enjoy it. So, um, my fire going by full power. Um, so I enjoy it this way. Um, and so I'm going to keep it this way. Some things I might do is just, uh, well, I am getting new tires because as you can see, this one's getting uh, kind of bald. I'm going to tighten these down a little bit because when I take off, my left one over there goes, duh, 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 duh. When, I, when you take off in a Challenger, at least I have to, I don't know if everybody does, but I have to actually put on the brake because if I don't, the whole plane shakes because of that gear. Um, so as soon as you take off, boom, on the brake, and then you get a nice clean climb. It's, it's a beautiful thing and it feels beautiful. Um, I am not going to upgrade my tank. I was going to. I was going to go the big tank, do the whole shabam. And one day I might. But for now, Mike at the factory has talked me out of it. Uh, because I plan on doing longer trips, they're going to be solo. So I'm actually just going to put a tank here in this seat and transfer the fuel. Um, maybe put a little switch here somewhere, just a switch. 
and then have a little transfer or just put the fuel in the plane that way i can land somewhere at a you know private get permission to be at a private strip or whatever and then just fill up it's 10 gallons back there um this thing's been doing really good on fuel it's actually kind of seemed like it's gotten better so i don't know if maybe it's how i'm mixing the oil and the fuel or what but it's definitely gotten better um if you have any other questions about a pre or about the internal workings of my airplane um feel free to ask i do not have the choke that is something i plan on doing um is adding the new throttle quadrant with the choke um and then also my battery is under the seat it's a brand new battery um i guess if anybody is curious it is that one the odyssey um i don't remember what number it is but it's an odyssey it works great um yeah so the things that i do want to do are like i said the bigger or the i'm going to stay with the stock size tires back here but new ones and then that's the five inch and i'm going to go to the six inch which requires a new fork and a bigger front tire and wheel um and then you know luckily i have this brace if you have a challenger and you don't have this brace in here i highly suggest it one of my first experiences with the challenger with was our buddy uh flying into uh rec law and this literally just broke right off the front wheel just came all the way up to the bottom but this support helps change that to where that's not a situation um but you know you got to get in here to change a fork so i'll have to do that at some point in time to get the big bigger um uh front nose wheel again i do plan on getting a bigger tank at some point in time it's just not a priority i'm going to do the, the exterior tank for now so that i can get more range out of this plane um so let's talk um about a pre-flight somebody asked me hey i bought a challenger i think his name was david or something but he said how do you do your pre-flight so i'm going to do a pre-flight in this uh the way i do it everybody's going to be different feel free to tell me hey um oh you're doing it wrong or you know this is how i do it please put the comments in here and i'd glad if i'm doing something wrong tell me if you've learned something from how i do it tell me that too i'd appreciate it so um, I always start with up here when I pre-flight. I put everything in the plane first, um, my digital stuff, and I always start by hitting the master, and I check my voltage, make sure I have my voltage. Um, sometimes I'll go ahead and throw strobes on, throw my navigation lights and everything on, and then I just kind of take a step back. Um, you know, now obviously you're not flying all the time in the evening, but you can see my strobes back there working when everything's working. Um, not all challengers have lights, so so you know, turn it all off and turn the master switch off. Make sure you do that. Make sure the key is in the off position, which it is. Um, when I have the new panel, I'm thinking I'm going to get this flat mounted in the panel. I'm working on that. I was talking to Mike about it, but this is the busiest guy on the planet, so I'll figure that out in some other lifetime probably. Um, then my pre-flight is I start from the front and I kind of go back. I get down here and I grab this tire and I kind of shake it, check the bolt, kind of check everything. I look at my hinges, make sure nothing's like coming apart. Um, just kind of eyeball everything. And then I really like to get up in here and I like to look at, at all these. There's these little um, things in here that hold all this together. I like to look at the wires and make sure the wires are like in good shape. Uh, make sure there's no fraying or nothing like that. Then I work my way back to this because obviously I don't want my front gear to come through on me. Then I work my way to the stick. And then you see these little lines here. I like to do this, go left and right and left and right because I'm looking for any fraying. Then I'm gonna do that on my back stick too. So I grab this stick and I look for any fraying, no fraying, look over there, no fraying, I'm good to go. Um, at this point in time, I usually check, and my, for the record, I am not doing this for the video. Ask anybody who flies with me, this is how I pre-flight the plane. I am overkill. I reach under here and I feel all these bolts that are attached to these nuts. Um, and I feel them and I go through them. When I'm on this side, I look at this Roni, the, you know, I got my heavy lift kit. I look for that nut there and I touch, or excuse me, I look for the bolt to come through right there. And I touch that nut and I kind of inspect these things. This looks good. And then I go to this one. And then or so I come to this backside over here and then I go ahead and take a look at everything over here. There's a lot of rivets. Um, that's like a ground. I always make sure that actually today we just had to fix a ground. So it's kind of funny that, that we bring that up. But uh, anyways, from this side, I come over here and I look at this backside. Uh, I take a look at it, feel it. Let me see. 
you know, and make sure that there's some uh, clearance or the, the uh, bolt is coming through the nut. Okay. Then I come out here to this Roni. Now this is obviously the opposite side, but I look really closely at this bad boy. I really get in there and I'm looking for any cracking and I'm looking for any the bolt to be loose. I'm checking this nut and bolt and I'm moving it around and it has a little bit of play in it. You want this to have play. I usually go to this and because these are loose, I just push mine down a little bit. That holds the gear in place kind of when I'm taking off. And actually I do that after every landing, I push that down. I probably should tighten that bolt up, but I'm scared to tighten any bolts up because if you look at this bolt, it's going through, you know, here. So I don't want to ruin the structural integrity of this. So I just kind of leave them the way they are. They seem tight enough, but um, again, if you have any other way of doing it, let me know. Um, then I kind of look up here um, and you can see there's like these bolts that are holding the frame in place or the this tubing to up there. And I just kind of eyeball things and I like to grab my trim and watch my flaperons go up and down. So you can see them. Yeah, which ones yeah, it's come way down way up look at it make sure it's in good place um recently i had one of these fall off that this little uh bolt that goes over this the little excuse me the nut that goes over that so i'm gonna have to order one of those for moving that um this little thing right here this actually changes the sequence of my lights for my net or the my uh my lights that blink on the outside um so anyways um i come this way i check to make sure there's a nut here, nut there, nut there, nut there. And then I grab it, you know, just, just grab it and just give it some love. Grab, check this, work my way up here, check this. I mean, we're depending on nuts and bolts here, people. Okay, come back, check this nut, this bolt, do that. I come around the outside usually. I look really good at this Roni. Make sure it's good and I touch it. Make sure the nuts down there, get a little bit of play in it. I inspect my gear. I have the fiberglass gear, so this is a little stronger than, than the aluminum or the metal, whatever it was. I kind of feel these, usually these are a little looser today. They're a little tighter. We did go land off, off uh, into the grass today. I do my fuel inspection, make sure I have enough fuel for the flight. I kind of just look up that way, check all that stuff. Just kind of look in here, look everywhere. Then I come back up and I grab my, my aileron, my flapper on here. I check that, make sure that nut and bolt's there. I lift it up. Then I like to check the uh, hinges. Just look at the hinges. Okay. Then I try to separate it. I kind of like do this, try to separate it. Okay. It's not going to come off on me on flight. We're good to go. From there, I work my side, my way to this side of the engine. Um, EGT and CHT probes, check those. Make sure my positive's good on my starter. Um, my Ray already had to do that one for, over for me one time it fell off and yep. I check on my engine mounts. Then there's these bolts that actually connect the engine to the plate. I just do a visual inspection. Make sure everything's tight, nothing's loose. Uh, I visually inspect my belt and I kind of grab it. Make sure it's good to go. I don't I want and I always look up here to make sure these screws and everything are in place and this isn't going to come off You don't want anything to come off and hit the prop um, Then I come in here and this is where we found the problem today That wire was broken today. So we got that fixed before we went on the flight. I was perform or I was charging a lot better So pretty happy about that um, I then look up I put my hand up here and I touch the nut and bolt that are holding the back the back wing strut on or the wing through here you can feel the bolt down here again some of this seems like overkill guys but i promise you it's not all it takes is finding one thing okay this is my personal opinion i come here to the prop make sure these are all in place i grab it i go up and down there's going to be a little bit of play obviously it's not going to be super solid in place i work my way down to here make sure the nuts and nuts and bolts are on then these are independently driven for the uh, uh, elevators. Make sure that's good. Make sure that's good. I even give them a little bit of play. Check these. These aren't known for having the problems like the ones that like the Ronies up front are, but I still check them. Um, check them both. Make sure the bolts in place. Make sure they're stiff. 
grab the, this here, touch the back, make sure there's a bolt down there. Then I like to look at my pins for my rudder when I'm down here. See a little pin sticking down there? And I can see that nut, and I can see that nut. Okay, then I work my way to my horizontal stabilizer, my elevator. And I just put these in. Mike just sent me these from the factory. Um, I do have the three hinges on each surface. So I have three here, three vertical, and then three more horizontal. So I have nine total. And I had all these pins um, in before, but these ones were rusted. So I replaced these, these pins with these uh, nuts and bolts with the little thing through them. Didn't do the best job in the world, but uh, you know, putting the little pin through the end there, but it is what it is. Um, and then of course I've got these. This looks kind of ch chintzy, but I did this because there was a crack forming and I have to order new ones and I just rather have something there and safe. Uh, you know, make sure my trim tabs here is good. Kind of go back and forth with this. Make sure that lights, I lost this already. Luckily the airport found it. So now we've uh, ray glued that on there real good. Um, but I just grab it. You know, if it's gonna come off, if it has any play, then we're canceling that flight and we're gonna figure out why. I mean, these are just rivets holding this on, you know? So I get here, I look at that pin, I like it. And I always like to look at, this attaches to the elevator here. I do it on both sides. Check this, got ahead of myself a little bit over here. Check this, they're good. I might replace them. They are kind of in that rusty category too. So that's something that I've thought about doing here recently. Um, structurally they're fine, but you know, um, it is what it is. So I grab it, try to get my light here, grab it, make sure it's good. Lift it up, down, lift up, down. Horizontal stabilizer up here is good. I've already checked these nuts and bolts because I can see them from the other side. So I'll just give them a pull. Okay. Back to the engine. So up here, I'm going to make sure all my fuel lines are secured in place. Make sure my safety line is on here. Thanks, Jason. Jason hooked me up with this one because it had the safety line or safety wire uh, things in it, and I was gonna buy the one without it. Thank you, buddy. Love that guy. Um, check my belt again. I'm on this side now, so I'm seeing things a little bit differently. Uh, check my fuel filter for debris. Check all this wiring. Make sure everything's good. Just kind of visually inspect. Make sure I didn't have any leaks. Then I kind of go through this again. You know, I check this nut and bolt. I look at my flapper on up down I get my look at my hinges while I'm here hinge nuts bolts nuts bolts over here I have this GoPro mount on this one um so this is how I mount when you guys see this this look you know it's obviously from this mount right here um then I kind of go out and then I uh I kind of like to just kind of get at the end of the wing here and just kind of look at it and if you just get a good look and you're like, yep, okay, this wing's gonna stay on for the day. Check my lights. I wanna make sure these aren't coming off, um, you know, like getting loose. And uh, yeah, so I just kind of do the same thing over here. Now that I'm on this side of the plane, um, I push this down again. When you take off, you know, this creates tension against that. Well, this, this gear is the one that I have to step on the brakes and get it to stop uh, fluttering. But I just check everything, nuts, bolts, make sure there's no leak of uh, brake fluid um, or hydraulic fluid, whatever it is. And then I check this Roni, nut and bolt, and I, I grab it with my hand, I shake it. Um, I'm, I've already flown, I've already did, done all this today, so I'm just kind of showing you guys. And then from this side, I like to lean over and take a good look at it. Now you can do it obviously from the other side too, but I just feel like you get a different perspective of it from the opposite side. So. Kind of get a look at it um for the record uh normally i stand in there i just didn't want to go through doing all that on camera um and i just eyeball everything you know um i'll check my psi if i feel if i am if i'm in doubt i will you know put the thing on it but for the most part like i know what it feels like um the only one i had to put air in is that one but i'm about to switch that out anyways so and i checked it this morning it was fine um if you played disc golf throw dynamic disc my son is sponsored by actually here i'll show you guys so jonah on the channel as you guys know he's sponsored by west side so in the hangar we've got the west side logo but anyways um i know i said anyways 15 20 times um that's it obviously i feel like when i do it without the camera i'm kind of paying a little bit more attention um 
but it is what it is. Do me a favor, guys. Help me out with these videos by like liking them, commenting on them, sharing them, subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. I love making this content. Um, I said it in the other video that I made earlier today, but I'll say it again in this video. We are going to be doing flying to go fishing. So like we're going to have the rods probably like attached to the wings. Um, me and Justice are going to go do that hopefully this weekend. <clears throat> um, and Jonah, I'd like to get a disc golf like fly this to go play disc golf. There's an airport that's kind of far away that has a disc golf course at it, so we might do that too. Yeah, further away. Ugh, I hate looking at my mug. But anyways, so there it is. That's how I do it. If you have any questions, please ask, and I appreciate you. And again, please like, share, subscribe, comment. Even if the comment's something stupid like, hey, had fun watching your video, or I learned something, or be judgmental. I love it. If there's something you think that I'm not doing right, please let me know. Um, obviously, one thing I did kind of forget was uh, checking the stick. So, you know, when, I, when I'm doing stuff like this, I'm looking to make sure things are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, but there is a little bit more to it, but I'm just trying to give you guys a general idea of how I do my pre-flight. I have seen a few people do them online, and yeah, I wasn't too impressed. So um, I feel like mine's a little bit more overkill. And it does actually take as much time or more than what you saw here today. So, uh, yeah, sounds good. Please subscribe. Airplanes rule.